Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Today, I am joined by Christina, and we are talking about how to style yourself to bring out what you desire. Christina, welcome into the podcast. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I, you are so welcome, and I'm so excited that we finally get to chat face-to-face. Even though our listeners can't see us, this is the first time that Christina and I have actually connected because we're in the same community. So it's like, oh my gosh, she's real. <laughs> she's a real person. I just absolutely <laughs> love this. Um, so Christina, before we drive in, dive in today, can you tell us more about yourself, who you are, what you do? Yeah. Yeah. So my name is Christina. Um, A lot of people call me Nikki based off of my business name. Um, I am the owner and curator of Love Nikki Boutique. So it's been a journey getting to where I am. I never thought I'd be an entrepreneur, honestly. I truly think the universe kind of put forth 50% of the effort and then the other 50 was my doing. So it's kind of um, crazy and a blessing how I got here. Um, It all started with kind of identity loss. I know a lot of moms go through identity loss and transitioning from Christina to Christina and mom was really difficult for me. Um, I was just kind of figuring out what do I do now? How do I act? What am I supposed to do now? Am I solely like wearing the mom cap? And I think I took on the mom cap too much and put aside Christina's cap and I lost myself. And it also um, was really hard because I had a lot of postpartum anxiety and depression going on too at that time. So I got help after I finally discovered what was going on and I kind of um, was able to identify this is not normal. Um, It was just a little excessive, like the thoughts going on and everything and the worry, the sleeplessness. So then after kind of starting my self-healing journey, I once I felt confident enough, started dabbling back into style. Um, I was doing way too much of the mirroring at that point. And I was like, no, this does not feel right. I don't feel confident. How do I get out of this feeling? Um, So that's where I kind of just dove in and started shopping. I I love shopping. Um, Retail therapy. I know some people don't agree with it. I I do. um, But definitely the holistic healing helps most. (laughs) Um, so I started shopping with an MLM at the time and I loved it so much and spent so much of our money on it my husband said hey why don't you just become a stylist for it and I was like okay Um, but I really had no interest in selling it was more so just to get the discount on the clothes and I just started playing around with styling them and I felt really really good and I was like okay I feel like bad a mom right now like this is awesome I'm feeling like me again and I started sharing pictures of myself um, just out with my daughter in the outfits and I would get comments like oh that's super cute where did you get that and I would tell them I work for this MLM I sell this clothes too Um, and then I kind of went from there and I did the MLM for a good eight and a half months and then think changed a little bit. The owner of the MLM shifted the style. It wasn't quite me anymore. Um, And the prices were a little bit ridiculous, in my opinion, Um, just not within my budget of what I would pay for for clothes. Um, So it wasn't just authentic to me anymore. So then I thought, okay, what do I do now? This has been really fun. It's been really fun uplifting women too in the process while uplifting myself. And I sat down and we thought about it and my husband and I talked and he's like, why don't you just start your own business? So we looked into how to get an LLC and all the pieces and parts of how to start a boutique. And I did my homework and that was at the end of 2021. Um, And then in 2022, Love Nikki Boutique happened, named it after my daughter, Nicolina. Um, Her birth and everything is like the hardest part of my life and the best blessing ever. And at that point, I also had my son, Michael. 
And I was like, okay, I have two kids. I'm going to do this. I'm going to show them that you can work and be a business owner. So then Love Nikki Boutique opened and I started curating, um, helping with personal styling and had a website developed. Um, it's still crazy to say this. That's why I think I hesitate so much because it still seems like a dream and it all happened so quickly. I'm still growing, but it's just truly a blessing. And I can't believe that I let this creativity flourish into a business. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. What an incredible story. And one that a lot of us can relate to because becoming a mom, we do tend to lose some of our identity and yeah. we get lost and yeah. you just don't know where to go. And then add in the postpartum anxiety, postpartum depression. A lot of times when you're going through that, it's so hard to recognize what's actually happening. I know with myself looking back, it's easy to be like, oh my gosh, like why didn't I get help sooner? But when you're going through it, you just, you don't even have the clarity of mind to be like, wait a minute, it's not normal that I'm, I can't shut my mind off, that I'm not sleeping, that I'm having these thoughts. So I do appreciate you sharing that because that is something that we don't talk about enough as moms and we should like, all right, you don't have to be struggling. There's so many resources and help and things available. So thank you so much for, for touching upon that. Sure. And then too, I just love how you stayed authentic to you when you felt like things weren't aligning anymore when it just wasn't quite your style when it was like you know this is kind of out of my budget now like you did your own thing and that's incredible because that's scary especially when you do have kids like i agree like my kids it's being a mom is the most challenging yet most rewarding thing ever. But to be the example for them that, okay, if you're in a career that you don't love, if you're not loving your life, then make a change. Like to me, like empowering my girls with that is like the best gift I can ever give them. Maybe I'm screwing it all up. I don't know, but I am <laughs> loving life so much more now that I'm just embracing it. Chaos and all and all of the trials and tribulations. And, you know, today my daughter went to school and she's literally has a tie dyed shirt on and she's got tie dyed pants on and they're two different colors of tie dye. But you know what? Hey, that's her style. It's her vibe right now. I love it. She's covered up. So I'm going to pick my battles and <laughs> still I'm cringing on the inside, but I just absolutely love that. So can you help provide some guidance to other moms? Like when they're feeling lost, where do they even start to find their identity through their style, through their clothing? Where, where do you start when you're like, I don't even know who I am anymore? Um, that's a really good question. And I'm glad you asked that. Um, that's the first part of the process and the journey, honestly, and kind of condensing it into those little pieces and parts makes it so much less overwhelming. Um, it's a lot of trial and error at first, finding your own personal style, uh, mostly errors, and that's okay. That's what I like to tell my clients and shoppers. It is really genuinely okay to make those errors because you're discovering yourself. You're discovering what you like and what you don't like. Um, for me personally, it took me a good year to figure out what I actually liked. And I like to share that with people because people tend to knock on themselves. They're like, oh, I'm so indecisive. I don't know what I like. I'm just going to stick to what I have. And they're not genuinely happy with it. So take the time you need. It's okay. Um, don't mirror other people. Um, it, it it's such an icky feeling, like looking back on it, I was like, man, why did I do that? I am who I am, you know? Um, so that's the biggest reason I wasn't feeling confident or comfortable. And that's something I want um, others to take away. Just discover what makes you feel confident, what makes you feel comfortable, what makes you feel good, what makes you feel you. That's so important. Um, use Pinterest as a mood board. I love Pinterest, create mood boards, um, see things, you like set a day aside to go look for clothes but not buy the clothes um, that's what I like to advise people because it offsets a lot of that pressure that you put on yourself especially if you're preparing for like an event or something and you're like oh my gosh I have x amount of hours and I have to get an outfit now for 
tomorrow or something like that. Um, so this way, when you set aside that time to just look at clothes, you're kind of discovering, okay, I know I see this, I've tried it on, put it in the back of your mind. And then when that upcoming event or that day, PTA meeting, whatever it might be, um, outfit is there, go buy it. Um, I love doing stuff like that. Just preparation, start small. Um, for example, if you tend to stick to neutral colors, that's what I used to do. I was like all about the beiges, the whites, the blacks. Um, I consider black a neutral. <laughs> so try adding um, just a pair of maybe printed pants or like a little pop of color. Um, or if you normally like oversized baggy lounge sets, maybe try styling a pair of like tight biker shorts instead and see how you feel in them. Just kind of like play around with things and discover what you like and don't like. Um, another thing I like to say on what you wear on a daily basis, um, when you look in your closet, don't think of trends. Think of, does this serve me anymore? Um, like, do you still like that hot pink pair of pants because you genuinely enjoy them or because they're in trend right now? I, I like to go by that um, because then you really can kind of keep that piece and invest in that piece for the long term. And I, I love doing that because then you kind of kind of like go back and shop in your closet and you just, it's the feel good stuff for me. Yes. I love that. That's all such great advice, especially the, you know, it's going to be a lot of trial and error and mostly errors like right there yeah. giving us the permission. Like it's just like riding a bike. You're going to fall down a whole bunch of times before you finally figure it out. And that's okay. Yeah. Like, I love that advice and don't mirror other people. I think this is where as women, we get so caught up. I mean, we even do it, you know, from a business standpoint, we're like comparing our chapter one to someone else's chapter 20. We're comparing like everything we do to everyone else. And why? Discover what makes you you, discover what you like, because it's that authenticity. That's what magnetizes people to you. I mean, there are, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of people doing the exact same thing that we're doing, but we all have a different way of doing it, a different take, exactly. a different perspective, something unique that we bring to the table. And I mean, we see it time and time again with, you know, authors and different kinds of cars. And there's so many things that, all right, it does the exact same thing. You know, it serves the same purpose, the books written on the same topic. But, you know, it's like Lori Harder has her following. Lindsay Schwartz has her following. You've got... Um, Judy Holler that has your following, but they, you know, and you can follow them all and they do amazing things. They just all have their unique take on it. And I just love that. And the other thing that you said too, is looking at your closet and not just holding on to stuff because like it's trendy, but I really don't like it. So I don't wear yeah. it. And then it just like sits there and takes some space, you know, do what you like use what makes you feel good because that's gonna that's going to overflow into our confidence too right because exactly. if we're feeling good then you know we're showing up more confidently absolutely and we just present ourselves in a different way and I think we become noticeable in that like confident light and then you just kind of gravitate more people towards you and you're just giving off that positive energy I'm all about just being uplifting and positive. Yes. I we, have my moments, but we all do. <laughs> we all do. But we do need more positivity in this world. We need it to be more uplifting because I mean, you think about it, our brains are wired for negativity. They're designed to keep us safe. So if we can style ourselves in a way that's making us feel good so that we're showing up. I mean, doesn't that make you feel good to be surrounded by people that lift you up versus pulling you down? So yes, we're talking about clothing and style, but it really impacts life. It truly does. Um, don't get me wrong. Like I love my leggings and sweatshirts and I say 60% of my week I'm in like loungewear, leggings, sweatshirts, but then I need those little pick-me-ups where I kind of play around and get creative with my look and it's just that pair of earrings or curling my hair with that floral top with the shoulder detail it just it's such a feel good thing for me and it's just my kids see it and my energy my husband notices it I'm just kind of I have that pep in my step I encourage everybody to do the same 
<laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. And I love how simple you made this process. I do appreciate that because Thank so many you. times I think we get overwhelmed and then we don't even start because it's like, oh, wait, I, I'm just not stylish. We tell ourselves these stories that that we can't create this personal style, that we can't play around. We don't give ourselves the permission to play. Exactly. That's a really great point. Um, I think as adults, we totally forget that child side, like our inner child. Yeah. And play. It, you'll bring out like so much of that creativity out of you and productivity. And I love what you um, shared the other day. Um, instead of consuming about creating, and I, I truly think like that kind of all produces itself back to that like positive circle. Right, exactly. Because then you're not, you, it gets you out of that whole comparison mode. And yeah, again, it gravitates people towards you. And I just, I yeah. love it. Christina, everything you are doing is amazing. You are truly such a ray of positivity that we need in this world. Where can we learn more about you? Yeah. So I have an Instagram. It's love, L O V E N I K I dot boutique. Um, I like to share style tips on there, what's coming out new. And then I also have my website. It's lovenikkiboutique.com. Um, Nikki is spelled N-I-K-I. Everybody always thinks it's two Ks. Um, and for anyone listening today, I'd love to offer them a deal of 20% off their entire purchase with the promo code Amy20. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. And all of that will be linked in the show notes. So be sure to check that off and use your coupon code Amy20 for 20% off. Nikki or Christina, now I'm calling you Nikki. <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> Christina, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to share this conversation with our listeners. It was truly valuable. Likewise, thank you so much for having me. It was such a fresh of breath air to talk to you. Absolutely. And until next time, mamas, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You've got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode.